Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Planet One WP. My name is Josie Carr. And today we'll be talking about how the hell do we sync up Tractor Pro 3 with Ableton or any other thing there is. I will be practicing on how not to talk like a robot and we'll take it from there. Cool, so I am gonna switch my screen so you guys can see what I will be doing. And I'll play something really quickly for you guys as I always do and we'll go from there. Cool, so I have my Ableton here on top as you guys can see and my tractor at the bottom. I'm gonna stop my tractor pl from playing and I'm gonna use my uh, controllers to do that. And I am going to actually stop my Ableton as well and I'm gonna stop all clips. And I'm going to reset to the beginning here and here I am at the very beginning. I have tractor to tempo 133 as you guys can see up here and we'll see how they sync up. The first way that we're going to sync them up, and I'm going to use it in this example, is by using MIDI clock with virtual input, and I'll explain that to you guys in a minute. So I'm just going to launch this guy here, and as you can see, Ableton, I mean, Tractor Pro has already started to play with it and is trying to catch up with it. So that is syncing up Ableton with two decks in Tractor Pro, a little messy, but like I said, a lot of times I do last minute things for you guys to kind of uh, show you guys how you can work them. So let's talk a little bit how about how I actually did that and I'm going to switch my screen one more time so I can go over the three ways that we can do syncing with them. The three ways are using the link feature, MIDI clock or using a MIDI time code. MIDI clock you can use, well, let's correct that, using MIDI clock but two different ways, by using with the virtual in input, in other words, if you have a USB device, you can use it to send MIDI clock to Ableton. Or if you have a MIDI interface where you have physical cables that you can plug in, then you would also use MIDI clock, but in that case, the output would be set differently in Tractor and Ableton. Cool, so let's talk about those three ways. Currently, the one that I used just for this demonstration was virtual input MIDI clock. 
Okay, what does that mean? Womp, 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 womp. So we're going to break it down into ABC terms because that's how we like things. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do in Ableton, right, we're going to go into the preferences shortcuts all day is command comma. We're going to open up Ableton here and we are going to send, actually, you know what? Let's not even do Ableton first. Let's do track the pro first. I think that would be more important. Same deal, we go to track the pro, the shortcut is command comma, and we go into the preferences. The first thing we want to turn on in Ableton is external sync up here. We want to enable MIDI clock. That means it will send MIDI clock to Ableton if it were to be used as a master. And if it were to be used as a slave, which is the way that I used it, I wanted to use my Ableton to actually start tractor, not the other way around. Okay. We have to set a, I mean, track the pro to external. So we've turned them on, turn them both on. So you can go either, or maybe you want to start tractor with Ableton, or maybe you want Ableton to start tractor. It's good to have them both on, right? The next thing we're going to do is go into controller manager right here, and we have to add a device. Okay. I've already added it, but you guys will add it by going to add and adding a generic MIDI device. Okay. Once you've done that, you've added it, but now it's saying, okay, I have a generic device. How do I send generic MIDI out? All right? Well, here on the in and output port, or not just send it out and also receive it. I have my tractor interface that's hooked up via USB. That's it, USB. It doesn't have to be one that has physical cables like I have here. Just any key, even a controller that you may be using that has USB is fine to use. Okay. Then you will set that to track the virtual input. What that means is that it is going to use your USB connection for MIDI through this generic device that you created. Generic device, set the input to track the virtual input. So it's saying, hey, I'm ready to receive virtual input or MIDI via a USB cable. Again, I have my track the pro hooked up via USB. I have my machine hooked up via USB. I don't need a special, you know, gadget to make it work. And then I always like to do the output as well. And the output I've set to the same thing virtual, which is the USB. Be careful with that because sometimes if you make too many connections, you create a MIDI loop. So you want to be careful with that. So there we have it. Two things set up, set it up in external to external. I'm sorry, sync to external. And then the controller manager, create a generic MIDI device and set the input to virtual input, not whatever the name of your interface is alone. It has to be the virtual input. Okay. And the output as well. Once you've done that, you can close it. And now we want to go into Ableton and the same thing, command comma. And here at the bottom, we're going to go to the MIDI tab in Ableton, scroll down and we're going to find the tractor virtual input. It is saying that tractor, that Ableton is going to send out virtual MIDI clock. Okay. To track the pro or anything else that might receive it. So it's letting you know that that is what, how Ableton is going to output the MIDI. It's going to output it via this virtual input. Okay. That's why you have to turn on the output and you turn on the sync on it. Once you turn that on, okay, now if you reset here and I'm going to put tractor so we can see it, I'll hit play on my controller. That way you guys can see it. You guys can see that this will start to catch up. I'm going to stop all the clips actually. And I'm going to hit play. You guys can see that it started and that tractor is also starting and it does take a little while to catch up. That's why I prefer to use. I'll tell you guys out of the three which one I prefer to use at the end, but I prefer to use the cables better. I think it's a stabler connect, a sta more stable connection, but some of us don't have that or don't work with that. It's fine. So we see that this is 132. Now, if I were to change the tempo here in Ableton, right up here, I'm going to use my controller to do so. Okay. You can see that tractor will start to catch up with it. The only thing I don't like is that it starts to catch up. So you have to be careful with how you mix that happened to me when I was doing the intro for you guys, I switched, uh, one of the temples and it started to fall a little bit out of sync. So those are things that when you put your show together, you have to be conscious of.
Okay, I'm going to bring it back down to 132 or so. Okay, so that is one way. That is using the generic device. Okay. Adding a generic device and setting the input for Tractor Pro can receive input. Remember, we can go both ways. We can make Tractor start Ableton, right? And the way that we would do that, okay, would be, sorry, let me close this out. Instead of it being an external, which means waiting, you would hit play and set this one to external Ableton and in Ableton, you would turn off the output and then you would tell Ableton, hey, you're going to receive MIDI information. Remember, we're using the virtual. So we find virtual here, you're going to receive input. So we turn that on and you will see that an external option will pop up here. Watch this, it'll go away. Turn it on, it'll pop up there. So now if you turn it on, it is waiting for information to start, right? So here's where we go start, and we can see that Ableton started. So you can do it both ways. It doesn't matter which way you go. Again, for me, I prefer to use Ableton as the master because I can add loops and kind of stop Ableton and start it. It just has more options for the way that I work. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna go back to the original. I'm gonna turn this off first. And I'm gonna do the opposite, remember, because I want Ableton to be my master. Okay, so I'm gonna output, okay, informa uh, MIDI information. And here, I'm gonna put this, turn this one off and put it in external. And you can already see that it starts to catch up. Okay, so that is one way. The second way that we can use is what's known as the link feature, right? So we turn this off here. Okay, and I'm gonna also turn off my Ableton up here. I'm gonna stop it and I'll turn it off. And for that, we go again into the external sync and instead of it being on external for it to receive virtual, we put it on link. What does that mean? Link is a new feature that was uh, added a couple of years ago where two softwares or anything you may have can sync up, hardware can sync up if you are on the same network. Okay, it could be a wireless network, it could be a wired network with ethernet cables. So it's up to you how you set up your network, okay? Right now I'm gonna use my wireless connection, right, that I have here in my place. So I'm gonna turn on link, okay? And then I have to do the same thing obviously in Ableton. And I already have it in view, but if you don't have it in view, go to command comma, and if you guys go to the MIDI tab up top, you will see that it says show the link toggle, which is this. And if you guys turn it off, you guys won't see it. As you can see, it's gone from up here. You turn it on, you see it, and now you can turn it on, okay? And here in, Able in Attractor Pro, you have to turn it on as well, just like we did the external. You see how they're moving? They're waiting for information. Okay, so now I can turn my Ableton on. I can launch it, okay? And we'll play a clip or anything. And now it's one link, as you guys can see, and I'm gonna just go over there and play, play one of the decks. And now you can see that they're both in time with the link feature. Now I'm gonna stop it. Okay, so that is the second way and it's the easiest. Um, I think it's a cool feature uh, using the link feature, but I'm not too sold on it. I think uh, over, if you're using it for like, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes, it starts to drift a little bit and sometimes it falls out of time too much and I'm not a big fan of it, but however, I do like it. If you are gonna use it, keep in mind that it may start to, you know, shift in and out of time. And you might, if you're using sync, you might have to hit the sync button. Or if you're not using sync, you might have to start, you know, using the uh, buttons here to put it back in time, shifting it in time. You know, I like to do some things with the sync option. And a lot of the times, I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of the sync option. I prefer just to um, not use it, but we all have different ways to work. You know?
Cool. So that is the second option. Let's talk about the last and third option that um, I used. And that option is to have MIDI cables. Okay. And if you guys can see here on my desk, I have some MIDI cables that I'm using. Okay. I have a Tractor Pro 10 and it's an uh, audio interface as well as a MIDI interface. With that said, if you have a keyboard that has MIDI output, you can also use that as a MIDI interface, right? Okay, so to do that, the first thing uh, we have to do is I'm gonna turn off the link feature in Tractor and I'm gonna go to Command Comma. I'm gonna open it up and we're not using the link feature anymore. I'm gonna put it back in external. And then I'm gonna go over to the controller manager and under generic MIDI, I am going to choose not the virtual because I don't wanna use the USB option. I wanna use the MIDI cable option. In that case, I have to set it to the Tractor Audio 10 interface. Remember, it's two things. It's an audio interface and a MIDI interface. So think about this as a MIDI interface where you plug in the MIDI cable on. So that is what you're telling Tractor Pro it will receive his its MIDI information or syncing information from MIDI clock. Okay, we've done that. And in the output again, I like to do it because I don't know which way if I'm going to make one the slave or one the master. Only one can be the master. Okay, in this case, I'm opting to have um, Ableton be the master. Okay, so let's look for Tractor. You see, there we go. Audio interface, no longer virtual. Virtual is only for the USB. Okay, and now we also go to Ableton here. We turn off the link feature, right? And since this is going to be the master, I'm gonna to go to command comma, okay? And on that one, I'm going to set the output of it. Okay, let's look for Tractor Pro here. Cool, so I am actually using the Tractor Pro 10. I pulled a couple of cables prior to this broadcast, so my apologies there. Um, so the third way is to use, like I said, the MIDI cable here that is happening. And if you have an interface that has MIDI outputs, make sure that on the output section that you're working on, that is the interface that you're using. I have the output of my machine MK3 going into my MK, into my Tractor Audio 10, just because I use different setups. So, I, so for this one, I try to, you know, switch it and make it easy for myself for this demonstration, but obviously I forgot that I also have half of my rig set up a different way. So to correct that, again, the third way is with a MIDI cable. I am using the MK3. There's a red MIDI cable coming out of the MP3 that is going into my Tractor Pro 3, okay? And I've turned it on here, output, machine MK3, which means it will send the MIDI information on there. I have it going into my tractor piece over there. And in the input of it, first thing we wanna do, put in an external sync and remember the generic device, whatever you're using to connect the MIDI cable input into. In my case, I am using the Tractor Audio 10 and that's what I've selected there. So now that is the way that I prefer to work. I just think that the MIDI cables are a lot more um, stable as far as staying in sync for a very long time, you know, but that's an argumentative point. For me, in my experience, it just, it just is, you know? So if I hit play here, you guys can see that it's starting my um, tractor. And they're in sync now, I can add more stuff. anything I want from here now.
so those are three cool ways that you can sync up Ableton with Tractor Pro. And by the way, if you use Logic, you can do the same thing with Logic as well. Just go into the MIDI settings in Logic and set it up so it can receive MIDI clock. So the three ways are using link, using virtual input, which means any USB device that you have hooked up can be used to generate MIDI clock back and forth. And the third way is to use a MIDI interface, which I did here with my machine MK3 going into my tractor. Those are three ways. And one could be the master and the other one could be the slave. It all depends on how you work. For me, I prefer Ableton to be the master because I can add a bunch of uh, loops and things like that and kind of um, launch them as I want, stop my Ableton, and I can always catch up to Tractor. Keep in mind, things to be careful with, keep in mind that when you do change tempo, it will have to ramp up to catch up or you know, ramp down to catch up to whatever tempo you have. So in that case, you, there are tricks you can do. You, maybe you can you know, filter out your decks while you keep the music playing and Ableton or Logic, and then when it's, it has caught up, then you can bring those guys in. So there's always cool ways to work around things. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the quick how-to. And again, my name is Josie Carr. And um, please follow me and share my channel if you can. It would be super helpful. I like to do more videos, so that would be super great. My name again is Josie Carr, and thank you for stopping by Planet 1WP. Bye.